President Bolatinibu has approved the appointment of Dr. Abdul Mukhtar as the National Coordinator of the Presidential Unlocking Healthcare Value Chain, that's PVAC. It's an initiative which is domiciled under the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, chaired by the Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Dr. Mohamed Ali Pate. As far as what the strategic approval, or excuse me, this strategic approval, as far as what its targets are, is seeking to unlock you know, billions of dollars of uh, in investments in the healthcare system, they have a time-bound cross-ministerial collaboration to basically restructure it, reduce to, uh, healthcare, medical tourism, increase jobs, and you know, basically get that private sector money in there. Uh, Dr. Abdul Mukhtar, he joins us now from our Abuja studio. Good morning to you, uh, Doctor. Congratulations on the appointment. Um, so, can you tell us, you know, how this initiative is going to meet its goals, and I guess how it's different from previous other efforts to enhance, you know, private investment in the healthcare system? Uh, good morning, Rotis, and thank you for having me. Uh, so, as you've said, this presidential initiative was actually established uh, October of last year by His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to address specific issues. And what are we trying to address? You know, Nigeria is a population of 230 million people. We import almost 80% of the medical products that we use. Uh, that translates to about 70% of medicines, about 99% of medical devices, almost 100% of the vaccines that we use. So for the issue around health security, for the issue around you know, creating an industry, so industrialization, but also looking for at public health imperatives, you know, this initiative was uh, established. Um, it is different in the sense that, uh, first of all, I think that the political will uh, from His Excellency the President, uh, from the Honorable Coordinating Minister of Health, uh, Professor Ali Pate, is there. Uh, so as a presidential initiative, you know, you also, we report to the President, uh, but we also have, you know, many of the key institutions and organizations that need to be around the table when discussions have been held. You know, so we have four, actually five ministries, uh, Minister of Health, uh, Minister of Trade and Industry, Minister of Finance, Minister of Budget and Planning, Minister of ICT, but you also have finance and institutions, the Bank of Industry, uh, MOFI, you have NSIA, uh, we have the regulators, Pharmaceutical Council of Nigeria, uh, NAFDAG, we have Customs, we have FIRS, uh, we have everybody that has to be around uh, the table, but more importantly also, the private sector is also represented. You know? So as an initiative that has everyone around the table, I think that's one area where it's different. Uh, second, I think that uh, this is also not being done in isolation. You know, Previous efforts have been done in isolation, trying to push manufacturing but this one is being done through a holistic you know, approach to the healthcare uh, system in Nigeria. We know we are implementing a, a national Nigerian healthcare um, re renewal investment uh, program. And so this uh, pro uh, presidential initiative to, to unlock the healthcare value chain is actually one of four pillars and several cross-cutting pillars that are enacted that have been, uh, have been implemented uh, in the health sector to address this. Um, so this is why I think this is uh, different this time. And then uh, finally, and I can talk about it uh, going forward, is that we are looking at it also from an ecosystem perspective. You know, we, uh, for the first time, you know, we've gone into the industry, we, you know, we met with manufacturers, you know, we visited their factories to see what the real issues are. Uh, we talked to several millions of Nigerians, we know what the issues are, what the problems, what the concerns are. Uh, so we're trying to design a holistic uh, strategy, a found, set up the foundation uh, for long-term manufacturing so that we can be, have a very sustainable system uh, for having and addressing these uh, issues that we have. All right, so that's quite robust. I mean, healthcare is, is huge and there's so much to, to focus on. So what have the players in the sector told you about the challenges that they're facing? I suspect that energy and foreign exchange is going to be part of those issues, rising inflation. And what, what do you think is, needs to be done to address them? Yeah, so uh, good question. Again, we listen. So we created, one of the first things that we did was created this group we call the Pharmaceutical Consultative Forum, uh, which has been done actually for the first time, where we bring uh, all the industry players in the pharma sector, but uh, we've also met with different you know, product manufacturers. We've met uh, about three times in Abuja here uh, and in Lagos with uh, manufacturers of syringes and needles. Uh, we've met with the pharmaceutical industry twice in Lagos, once in Kano. You know, so what, what they tell us, uh, you know, the basic issues, you know, when you do manufacturing, uh, you mentioned infrastructure, you know, power, uh, transportation, you know, those uh, infrastructure issues, but there are also policies and regulations and laws. 
Uh, there are also issues around market access. There are also issues around access to finance, uh, and also just the human capital, the skill, manpower to address these issues. Now, the top um, problems or challenges that we've had, uh, one is actually policies, the policies and regulations that are kind of seen by industry as not helping uh, and actually constraining the growth of that sector. Uh, there are also issues around uh, regulations and then, you know, how do you access the market? You know, so some of the things that we're doing, um, just uh, listening to them, uh, one of the first things that we do is say, how do we address uh, some of these policy issues? Uh, we went to Mr. His Excellency, Mr. President, and said, these are the issues, these are the challenges. And he asked the Honorable Minister of Health and the Attorney General to come up with an executive order uh, that will address these things. Um, I'm happy to say uh, that this executive order, you know, was signed by His Excellency, Mr. President, in June. Uh, and was actually gazetted about two weeks ago. I have a copy uh, to show you, but you can also access it on our website, uh, pvac.gov.ng, uh, and in many uh, other related websites. You know, what this order um, is supposed to do is, first of all, there is provision for zero duty, zero VAT, uh, for the importation of raw materials and uh, machinery for the production of various healthcare products. So if you're producing uh, act what we call in the industry, active pharmaceutical industry um, ingredients or you know, raw materials for uh, production and packaging and those kind of things, you know, you'll import your um, machinery uh, at uh, zero VAT, zero duty. Uh, the same with other products, you know, bed nets, you know, rapid diagnostic tests and so on and so forth. Now, that's one thing that the order is supposed to address. The second um, is really um, around market shaping. You know, how do you aggregate volumes? How do you provide an incentive for these manufacturers so you know when you produce, you're actually going to sell? Uh, we have a very fragmented procurement system. You know, you have the federal government, you have the state governments, you know, you have private sector. You know, so how do we come up with a mechanism where you, what we call market shaping, uh, where you provide things like framework contracts, uh, volume guarantees, aggregated volumes, and things like that. And we are in the process of designing actually a solution uh, for that, you know, using a public-private uh, partnership model uh, that will address uh, these issues. So that's on the um, policy side, uh, but we've also been uh, mobilizing financing. You know, the industry says to us, um, financing is difficult, especially for the small players, and we've had them. Uh, so what we've been doing in the last uh, couple of months is mobilizing various pools of funds, uh, I'm happy to say, you know, give examples, you know, with uh, a Frexen Bank, uh, we have actually um, have an arrangement for a one billion US dollars uh, pool of money, uh, by basket of money just to address, you know, different concerns. So this money can come in the form of loans, uh, in the form of uh, equity, in the form of guarantees, in the form of technical assistance uh, that would be available to these uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we've similarly talked to the European Investment Bank, you know, through a program that they call the Human Development Accelerator. We have actually, again, mobilized, uh, it's about 1 billion euro uh, pool of funds. So we're looking at funding, but we're also looking at our local uh, financiers, right? You know, we're talking to the Bank of Industry, we're talking to the Nigerian uh, Sovereign Investment Authority, uh, Ministry of Finance Incorporated, just to design solutions. So our commitment uh, to Nigerians is if you have a, p p a viable, feasible and bankable project in the healthcare sector, then money should not be a problem. And this is the commitment that we're making uh, because we feel that we have various instruments, uh, the SMEs, for example, we're also designing instruments that will target specifically uh, small businesses in this sector uh, with whatever kind of funding that they need. Now, to be clear, this is not going to be free money where you know we just throw out, uh, government gives money to us, we decide who you give to and who we don't give to. This is money that actually will go into businesses that we feel are viable, uh, that have actually a business case uh, for investment, uh, whether it's through the demand, whether it's through that the technology is available, or whether that uh, you know we can build a supply chain uh, to address this. So a lot is, is happening and we've seen uh, tremendous results. We built a solid, uh, pipeline or projects that I'll be happy to talk about. All right, fantastic. I mean, we're, we're almost out of time, but you've really, you know, you've, you've, you've broken this down for us. So you've got the Afri Exim Bank making a commitment. You're talking to the you know, development banks as well. You're, you are promising, you know, you're telling Nigerians out there if they have an idea or a bankable project, it's not going to be free money. It's going to be, you know, a loan, but they can be funded. So you're trying to attract as much as you can. So um, what can we expect over the next few years? If I bring you back in a year's time or, you know, can, what's, what's the time, as far as time is concerned, do you think we can make meaningful progress in a, a year or two? 
Um, absolutely. Uh, we're very positive. And like I said, uh, this is not something that is going to happen next week, uh, but it's going to happen in the medium to long term. Uh, what we're building is a very solid foundation, you know, so that, you know, uh, private sector players, you know, will have the right policy environment, they will have the right financing, they will have the right market, uh, the huge market that they need to be able to do that. Uh, so in a year, when you bring me here, what I'll be showing you is a list of success stories. And, and to be clear, you know, we're already seeing success stories, you know, talking about uh, some of those businesses. You know, last week I was in Lagos and we had this, uh, we you called it a Shark Tank-like event where we brought small, entrepreneur, small entrepreneurs um, in Nigeria, you know, on, in the healthcare sector. I was blown by the kind of innovative ideas that I saw from young people, from women entrepreneurs, uh, from Nigerians from all walks of life, where, you know, within just a few days, we're able to have like a hundred brilliant businesses that came and presented to us. We selected about 14 of them. Uh, so going forward, you know, you should expect um, very clear, uh, huge investments to be made. Right now we have in our pipeline about 56 companies, about 35% of them are local, about 21% are foreign and international. So in the next one year, I will come back here and say to you, we have done X number and X will be a reasonable number, um, you know, of investments in pharmaceutical production, in bed nets production, in uh, vaccines, maybe we'll have one or two, you know, at least vaccine manufacturing uh, projects that are beginning to, uh, to be implemented. We'll have, you know, businesses in the rapid diagnostic test areas. We already have actually people coming, you know, like um, a, a, a good example I'll give you, you know, um, I always like to give this example, you know, malaria, you know, 25% of the global burden of malaria uh, is in Nigeria. We do not produce a single bed net. Uh, His Excellency, Mr. President, the Minister of Health said this is not tenable, this is not sustainable for us as a country. And we um, have an agreement now with Vestagard, which is the world's largest producer of bed nets, where we, they come in uh, Q1 of next year to actually start production here in Nigeria. They have found a local partner. I went last week uh, to the Lagos area to, to look at the site and it's ready. It's, uh, they have acquired their financing. Uh, things are happening. We have a few local manufacturers here of pharma that uh, have this ambition to produce what we call the active pharmaceutical ingredients, not only for Nigeria, but for West Africa. So in a year, what will happen is Nigeria will become a hub, not only for, for producing, not only for Nigeria, but for the rest of the West African population. And you know, we have 460 million people. So what we say to Nigerian manufacturers, we are laying the foundation for you to be able to build and manufacture for Nigeria, but you can also think outside Nigeria to West Africa to the rest of Africa. You know, we have the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement uh, that's already in place. Nigeria is going to sign the Africa Medicines Agency Treaty that will create the regulatory environment. Right. You know, we'll have a stronger and more efficient NAVDAQ uh, and all the institutions. So look, everything is placed. I think the time is now. Uh, we are ready, we are here, and this is our job is really to enable uh, and support right. entrepreneurs and manufacturers in Nigeria. Aye, uh, Dr. Abdul Mukhtar, we wish you the best of luck. And yeah, we'll bring you back. We'll see how things work out. Of course, the new national coordinator uh, for, the, uh, for the presidential uh, initiative for unlocking healthcare value chain. Thank you.